Four State Night Files. Our first edition of Four State Night Files is actually all about music, completely dedicated to local music around the four states. So, our first destination, anytime you think music in the four states, you think of Kitchen Pass. We're heading there now. I'd like to play an Adam Giebler song, but I would rather Adam Giebler come up and sing it himself. Josh Mullen, ladies and gentlemen, the premier guy, I would say. What would we call you here on Open Mic Night at Kitchen Pass? The host. The host. It, it host is his technical name. I've known Josh for about three years now. Uh, lead singer of Sin of the Poet. Yeah. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. You know, I got pretty lucky. If you were expecting it to get better, I apologize. So, I mean, whenever somebody is just starting out in music, and I mean, you're a young performer. I mean, we... And, compared to guys like Smitty and, you know, all the, the, the older guys in town. Um, what's some good advice for somebody who's very young trying to get on the music scene locally? Work hard. Promote yourself. You know, you're your own product. The idea is you're selling yourself. And, uh, you know, the more people that see you, you know, obviously the more people that are buying your product. And that's what, that's what a bar wants. That's what any venue wants is people in through the door, people to see you, people to see their place. You know, and I think it's just, it's just persistence, really. You know, the more, the harder you work at it, the more you promote yourself, the more people are bound to show up. And the you more people who show up at those bars, the more the bars and venues, the more likely you are to get rebooked. Right, and it's a great way of telling whether or not you're good, because if you're not good, people aren't going to show up. And if you are, then, you know, the people that do see you are going to tell their friends that they saw this really good artist or musician. <laughs> Mike provides too is a chance for people to see you know what is what what do I sound like on stage you know how am I in front of all these people and uh, you know and, and a lot of open mic artists have you know a lot of them that have come through our open mic are now doing gigs in other places and getting paid for their music and so I think you know open mic like really is just I don't I don't know I want to say like a tunnel straight through you get to put yourself in front of people you know, you get to, it's like sink or swim. This at, there, there's open mics everywhere, obviously. There are. There are several the in town. This, this is just a general uh, promotion for open mics in general. Yeah. Just just the idea of open mics. Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. Anywhere in town, like, you can get to perform. If you're an up-and-coming musician, like, you know, do it. I mean, you know, a, a buck is a buck, and, and a show is a show. You know, a gig is a gig. Like, Look what I found. It's DJ Yaki with Silla the Poet. Hey! So, thanks for coming out, Yaki. Hey, it's good sure. to see you. He's a proud supporter of Open Mic Night on Wednesday nights here at the Kitchen Pass. And uh, who's one of the better performers you've seen out here uh, that, that you would that you like to come back and see? And just just an unsigned guy, you know, some random local artist. Um, Chris Strasbaugh does some awesome poetry. Uh, these guys that are up right now too, Tommy and I can't remember the guy's name are great. Do great covers, a lot of good songs. They're really awesome. I don't know what their names are, but they're good. Night Files live at Kitchen Pass, and look who I run into. It is Smitty, Big Smitty himself, a uh, local music legend in the four states. Smitty, <laughs> thanks for coming by tonight, man. Appreciate it, Sam. And uh, you've been you've been doing music around here for, uh, I mean, I don't want to say, you know, 
forever, but time. you've been doing it for a long time, man. That's why I shave my head. It's gray. Let, them, <laughs> let it grow out. Well, yeah. And so when did you start doing music around the four state area? Well, we've been playing since probably 88, pretty 88. steadily. And uh, music's always been a part of our uh, life. My dad was a preacher, believe it or not. So he always did the church hymns and yeah. went from church hymns to the love of ACDC. And so wow. that's kind of how it started. It's kind of a, that's kind of a big circle to go around and go from church hymns to ACDC. We love classic rock and God. So somebody like yourself who's made a living on the music industry, um, I mean, it, primarily, do you can you get away with playing your own stuff or do you have to do a lot of covers? We, we have a... A tremendous fan base, uh, and that's one of the great things about Joplin. It's been great to our band and to me personally. So I think we probably could get away with playing a full night, but you know, your other, let's say, 80 people that's come out, you you might not be as inclined to keep them in the audience right. playing your own stuff. You know, so uh, I try to mix uh, six to eight originals in per show. Right. So, and and that's the double-sided sword. I mean, whenever you're uh, our young artist or even an, uh, an older veteran artist, you've got to play those cover songs so that you can keep on doing music. Right. Otherwise, you don't get to keep doing it. That's right. People always want to, just like this thing tonight, people want to feel like they're part of the band and uh, part of the show. So you want something that they can relate to. So, I mean, if you had any advice you want to give to, like, somebody who's young um, in a smaller town, not a small town by any means, but a smaller town, smaller than Kansas City and St. Louis. Right. Uh, what's the downfall that of playing in a smaller town as opposed to playing in Kansas City or St. Louis? Well, if you're a young person that's uh, wanting to do it for a living, the media market just is not here in Joplin. Now, that for me, that don't matter because this is where I like to live. Uh, several reasons, you know, raising a family and, you know, what you can live for in Joplin. Um, but for a young starting musician, if they're going to want to make it, they got to have the, you know, have the, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the, uh, the huevos? Huevos? Can we say huevos? It's a family program, sorry. Huevos. Uh, they got to have the guts, let's put it that way, right. to, you know, maybe move to L.A. and live on Roman noodles and bologna, <laughs> yeah. you know, for two, you know, two months or something. Uh, but they're... The, the thing about this area, Sam, is there's a tremendous amount of talent. It's, it's unreal, the talent that's in this area. Uh, it's just a lot of people just don't want to venture out from this area because of the things I was saying, the, the quality of living and, uh, you know, low, low cost of living. I mean, Joplin's always rated, you know, on the top for low cost, and that comes with wages too mm -hmm. <laughs> well if you want all the information on smitty and big smitty the band you can find that at the end of the program we'll have that on the credits smitty thank you so much hey, brother. Sam, it's good to see it, us here it's on play drums it's on feet a new day is dawning for regional Girl Scouts as five councils come together to form the Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland. The new council serves girls in 68 counties of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, from the Boot Heel to Mid Missouri, and from Springfield and Joplin areas to Northeast Oklahoma and Southeast Kansas. Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland brings new opportunities to girls while maintaining the mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. For more information, call 1-877-312-4764. All across Missouri, people are making a difference. AmeriCorps, providing resources to meet human needs. VISTA, building better communities. Learn and Serve, promoting the service of youth. Senior Corps, sharing wisdom and experience. Make a difference, be a volunteer. This message brought to you by the Missouri Community Service Commission. For more information, visit movolunteers.org or call 877-210-7611. Hi, I'm Janet Cavandi, and I've had the extraordinary opportunity to travel into space three times in the space shuttle. It all started right here at Carthage High School and Missouri Southern State University. Today, a university degree is more important than ever. A university education teaches you to analyze problems, to find creative solutions. I encourage you to stay in school and reach your full potential. You might just reach higher goals than you ever dreamed of.
Missouri Southern State University makes beautiful music. A four-year degree in music sounds incredible. From Missouri Southern State University, making a world of difference with music. Okay, here's the scoop. Just got done with the radio show. I'm on a Friday night. I just kind of want to have a good time and just hear a band. And I don't know what bands are playing in the area anywhere. So I'm going to go to a place that I know always has bands. Check this out. All right, just pulled into Turtle Heads. Sure enough, they do have a band. It's called Beneath the Surface. Never heard of them. I have no clue what they're going to be like. We're going to find out together. <laughs> Missouri Southern State University makes beautiful music. A four-year degree in music sounds incredible. From Missouri Southern State University. Making a world of difference with music. A new day is dawning for regional Girl Scouts as five councils come together to form the Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland. The new council serves girls in 68 counties of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, from the Boot Heel to Mid-Missouri, and from Springfield and Joplin areas to Northeast Oklahoma and Southeast Kansas. Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland brings new opportunities to girls while maintaining the mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. For more information, call 1-877-312-4764. All across Missouri, people are making a difference. AmeriCorps, providing resources to meet human needs. VISTA, building better communities. Learn and Serve, promoting the service of youth. Senior Corps, sharing wisdom and experience. Make a difference, be a volunteer. This message brought to you by the Missouri Community Service Commission. For more information, visit movolunteers.org or call 877-210-7611. Hi, I'm Janet Cavandi, and I've had the extraordinary opportunity to travel into space three times in the space shuttle. It all started right here at Carthage High School and Missouri Southern State University. Today, a university degree is more important than ever. A university education teaches you to analyze problems, to find creative solutions. I encourage you to stay in school and reach your full potential. You might just reach higher goals than you ever dreamed of. Now we venture to a place that I think has done a ton for local music. It's a formation of the bridge. It's called the Foundry. Check this out.
Foundry exists to give kids a safe place to come and watch watch a show. Uh, we are very music and art and uh, just pretty much any of the arts really uh, based and it's just to attract kids to uh, to experience art. As far as small shows go, uh, like tonight, it is mainly local, regional kind of stuff. Um, it's a little more intimate. Uh, kids get to know the bands. Bands get to know the kids. Foundry is a beautiful venue. It's an awesome music venue. Uh, what's it like harboring in some of those huge bands? I mean, what what is that experience like? I mean, Daughtry played in front of uh, 34,000 people last week, and he came here and played in front of 700. I mean, what's that What's that like, having that kind of energy in such a, in a not a small room, but a smaller room? Um, it was pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, fans got the opportunity to connect with him, which they don't have the opportunity uh, in a crowd of 34,000. Um, and that's what, that's what pretty much everybody gets to experience within our venue. Um, as far as size goes, right now we're probably one of the biggest in the area uh, with the exceptions of Kansas City, Oklahoma City, St. Louis. You also encourage them getting promoted and going on to bigger things, is that okay uh, with you? Yep, and we try to help them uh, accomplish those goals, uh, sending out their stuff. I have some bands uh, that I'm sending out uh, their their EPs to, to labels. I have uh, contact with booking agents that I'm constantly talking about uh, some of these guys so As far as like a uh, environment for younger adolescents to go, is it a do you do you think it's some um, you guys have done a good job security wise? I mean, is it a safe place for kids to come and hang out? Yes, for sure. Uh, most time you won't actually see somebody wearing a security shirt. Um, our security guys kind of blend in with the crowd, and when you know you'll see them dancing. Uh, you'll see, uh, but when when the time comes for somebody that uh, needs. Uh, Needs a little correction. Uh, they're there for that. So, uh, if people want to know more about what the bridge does and our foundry, mostly the music scene, where do they go? Uh, to the foundry's website, which is uh, www.thefoundrymusic.com or myspace.com backslash thefoundrymusic. Thank you, Donnie. A new day is dawning for regional Girl Scouts as five councils come together to form the Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland. The new council serves girls in 68 counties of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, from the Boot Heel to Mid Missouri, and from Springfield and Joplin areas to Northeast Oklahoma and Southeast Kansas. Girl Scouts of the Missouri Heartland brings new opportunities to girls while maintaining the mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. For more information, call 1-877-312-4764. All across Missouri, people are making a difference. AmeriCorps, providing resources to meet human needs. VISTA, building better communities. Learn and Serve, promoting the service of youth. Senior Corps, sharing wisdom and experience. Make a difference, be a volunteer. This message brought to you by the Missouri Community Service Commission. For more information, visit movolunteers.org or call 877-210-7611. Hi, I'm Janet Cabandi, and I've had the extraordinary opportunity to travel into space three times in the space shuttle. It all started right here at Carthage High School and Missouri Southern State University. Today, a university degree is more important than ever. A university education teaches you to analyze problems, to find creative solutions. I encourage you to stay in school and reach your full potential. You might just reach higher goals than you ever dreamed of. Missouri Southern State University makes beautiful music. 
a four-year degree in music, sounds incredible. From Missouri Southern State University, making a world of difference with music. Hey, Files, Sam McDonald, joined by Alonzo Metcalf, also known as DJ OZ. It's me. Appreciate it, bud. Thank no you. No problem. This is our section about hip hop music, and I know there's been a lot of uh, some people just don't like hip hop, and I don't understand that because hip hop's basically every type of music from before put together to current times. But I'm gonna let him talk about it because he knows so much more about it than me. You came from St. Louis. Uh, explain a little bit about your background in DJing as well as your connections with hip hop in St. Louis on the St. Louis scene. Well, I'm from St. Louis. Uh, I never actually intended on getting into music or DJing. Uh, just kind of stumbled upon it. I was actually a college athlete and uh, I gave those dreams up and uh, somehow found DJing. I took a few drum classes and piano classes in college. Uh, I wanted to write music, but I couldn't read it, so I couldn't play the drums or play the piano. And my friend suggested that I should pick up a pair of turntables, see how I like those. Uh, I got a pair of turntables, few records, and I haven't turned back since. Uh, so that's how I got into DJing. It was kind of a fluke accident, but it's worked out so far. And I, I fell in love with it. On a scale of one to creepy, how obsessed with music and hip hop especially are you? Uh, I remember standing in my room for nine hours straight just to learn how to mix. I mean, nine hours is a long time, but you know, when you're having fun and you know, you really like DJing and standing there for nine hours, it, it flies by really fast, you know. So I guess I'm really obsessed with it. I mean, I'm a perfectionist, so I had to get it down. Like, you can't stand in front of people, and, and if you can't mix, you know, it'll come out, you know. Some people may not understand a bad mix, but. I'm a, I'm a critical person, so I'll be more critical, you know, with myself. So that's why I want to work and practice and make sure I really got it, you know. As far as hip hop and roots go, let's talk about the history of hip hop and how's it involved. I mean, when did it start and where is it at now and how did it get there? When it started is always up for debate. Where it started is up for debate. So I'm going to tell you how it started because you can say it started back in '73 and then somebody will come along and say it didn't, and then you can say it started in the Bronx with somebody from Brooklyn will say it started in Brooklyn. But I'm going to tell you how it started. Uh, we, we understand that it started with a man named DJ Herc. Uh, it, it was him with just playing break records or break, break weeks. He'll, he'll pick a record, uh, like a James Brown record, and he'll wait till the drum comes up, and that's just the solo, like the drum solo. So they call that the break. And he would just, just play the breaks. He wouldn't play like the main songs. He would just only play the breaks. And that kind of caught on. More DJs were doing it. And then the DJ had a guy known as the MC, and he would talk in between the breaks, you know. And then it evolved from there, just the MC, you know, now the MC started rapping. It, it, it just kind of evolved, you know. It was very simple, just two turntables and a mic, and it kind of evolved from there, you know. A lot of people don't really like what hip-hop's doing now. A lot of people badmouth it, and I mean, what's your opinion on how hip-hop has evolved, and you think, like, Let's say some of the more current stuff, um, that, do you think that's a fluke or do you think these people are making good music? See, the thing is with hip hop today, uh, it's, it's, it's all about money and what you see from the media and the images you get from television isn't a true representation of what hip hop is. There's still a lot of hip hop, like true hip hop, that's not being promoted or advertised, you know. Uh, it, it took a, a wrong turn when the money really got involved. So there's people sitting around a round table with suits on that has no idea uh, anything about music or hip hop, but they know how to talk business. So they, they, they're putting out whatever sells at the time. So what you're seeing now is just, you know, it's just, a, I guess, a niche as far as what's selling. So uh, I don't know. I guess hip hop does kind of have a bad name as of right now because you see the hip hop artists degrading women, throwing money around and champagne everywhere. And that's what a lot of people think hip hop is, but hip, that's not really what true hip hop is, you know. Hip hop was graffiti, uh, DJing, MCing, and break dancing. And, Four know, elements of hip hop. Yeah. I actually knew that. I, <laughs> I, I was going to quiz you on that later, but it's okay. You knew that one. And, and you don't see that at all. You, you've never seen a break dancer. A graffiti artist, uh, you know, you really don't even see the DJ in the video anymore. The DJ was the forefront of hip hop. Hip hop started with the DJ, and you never see the DJ anymore. You know, mm -hmm. so 
This is actually the most I've ever heard OZ talk in my entire <laughs> life. I've known Alonzo for about a year and a half now, and he said more in the last 10 minutes than he has probably in the last five years of his life. He never <laughs> talks. First scratch, chirp scratch, Jazz Jeff did an 88. Makes the record sound like a bird. basic sound that DJ uses is the, the, the ahs, which is, which is that, the sound. Everybody uses this. Very basic. The most basic sound. Everybody scratches with it. You can also chirp with the ah, but it sounds a little, little bit different. I stole this from DJ Z Trip, so this is not original. I don't even think I can do it. Let me see if I can juggle. All right, you gonna juggle? You gonna juggle Tom Sawyer? Yeah, I'll try. The best part about DJs is that they have the ability to kind of flip around what genre they're good at and kind of apply it to all different types of music. That's why this is kind of cool to see um, him play with Rush because he's never heard it before. I threw him on the spot on this one. It's really basic. All he's doing is just backing the record up, but he was kind of like a hair off on the beat as far as backing the record up. Um, I mean, I'm not good at, you know, juggling beats either, but we're going we're gonna to give it a shot. We just start from the beginning of the record, I guess. Now that he's making me look like a little girl, I'm stopping. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 